Max Weber was a German sociologist, historian, jurist, and political economist who is regarded as among the most important theorists of the development of modern Western society. His ideas profoundly influenced social theory and research. While Weber did not see himself as a sociologist, he is recognized as one of the fathers of sociology along with August Kant, Karl Marx, and Emile Durkheim. Listen to these quotes by Max Weber. Power is the chance to impose your will within a social context, even when opposed and regardless of the integrity of that chance. It is not true that good can only follow from good and evil only from evil, but that often the opposite is true. Certainly all historical experience confirms the truth that man would not have attained the possible unless time and again he had reached out for the impossible. All knowledge of cultural reality as may be seen is always knowledge from particular points of view. The fate of our times is characterized by rationalization and intellectualization and above all by the disenchantment of the world. Homelessness is the fundamental idea of salvation in Jainism. It means the breaking off of all earthly relations and therefore, above all, indifference to general impressions and avoidance of all worldly motives, the ceasing to act, to hope, to desire. The primary task of a useful teacher is to teach his students to recognize inconvenient facts, I mean facts that are inconvenient for their party opinions. A highly developed stock exchange cannot be a club for the cult of ethics. Politics is a strong and slow boring of hard boards. All research in the cultural sciences in an age of specialization, once it is oriented towards a given subject matter through particular settings of problems and has established its methodological principles, will consider the analysis of the data as an end in itself. Not everyone realizes that to write a really good piece of journalism is at least as demanding intellectually as the achievement of any scholar. The fully developed bureaucratic apparatus compares with other organizations exactly as does the machine with the non-mechanical modes of production. Whenever known and sufficient causes are available, it is anti-scientific to discard them in favor of a hypothesis that can never be verified. Only he has the calling for politics who is sure that he shall not crumble when the world from his point of view is too stupid or too base for what he wants to offer. Within the confines of the lecture hall, no other virtue exists but plain intellectual integrity. The career of politics grants a feeling of power, the knowledge of influencing men, of participating in power over them, and above all, the feeling of holding in one's hands a nerve fiber of historically important events can elevate the professional politician above everyday routine even when he is placed in formally modest positions. Every type of purely direct concrete description bears the mark of artistic portrayal. All the analysis of infinite reality which the finite human mind can conduct rests on the tacit assumption that only a finite portion of this reality constitutes the object of scientific investigation and that only it is important in the sense of being worthy of being known. Culture is a finite segment of the meaningless infinity of the world process, a segment on which human beings confer meaning and significance. Either one lives for politics or one lives off politics. Social economic problems do not exist everywhere that an economic event plays a role as cause or effect since problems arise only where the significance of those factors is problematical and can be precisely determined only through the application of methods of social economics. Politics means striving to share power or striving to influence the distribution of power either among states or among groups within a state. One can say that three preeminent qualities are decisive for the politician, passion, a feeling of responsibility and a sense of proportion. 
Causal analysis provides absolutely no value judgment, and a value judgment is absolutely not a causal explanation. The modern view of criminal justice, broadly, is that public concern with morality or expediency decrees expiation for the violation of a norm. This concern finds expression in the infliction of punishment on the evildoer by agents of the state, the evildoer, however, enjoying the protection of a regular procedure. The ethic of conviction and the ethic of responsibility are not opposites. They are complementary to one another. Precision, speed, unambiguity, knowledge of files, continuity, discretion, unity, strict subordination, reduction of friction and of material, and personal cost, these are raised to the optimum point in the strictly bureaucratic administration. Only he has the calling for politics who is sure that he will not crumble when the world from his point of view is too stupid or base for what he wants to offer. Only he who in the face of all this can say in spite of all, has the calling for politics. One cannot prescribe to anyone whether he should follow an ethic of absolute ends or an ethic of responsibility. The so-called materialistic conception of history with the crude elements of genius of the early form, which appeared, for instance, in the Communist Manifesto, still prevails only in the minds of laymen and dautantes. It is not astonishing that there are many journalists who have become human failures and worthless men. Rather, it is astonishing that, despite all this, this very stratum includes such a great number of valuable and quite genuine men, a fact that outsiders would not so easily guess. Laws are important and valuable in the exact natural sciences in the measure that those sciences are universally valid. Thank you for watching this video, don't miss out the next video, please subscribe to our channel.